Hello, my name is Caroline Widdowson and I'm the Global Marketing Manager at Marks International. In this video, we're going to discuss the requirements placed on automotive manufacturers, their supply chain and associated test laboratories, looking at the sampling and analysis of chemicals found inside the vehicle cabin. The materials used inside a car cabin, such as plastics, leather, carpets and foam, release chemicals, specifically volatile or semi-volatile organic compounds. Over the last 20 years, this has been an area of interest in research due to the concerns that some of these compounds are detrimental to the health of the occupants. In addition to these concerns, more recently, there has been a lot of emphasis put on the off odor of materials in the car cabin and how the consumer perceives these. In 2016, JD Power released a quality study looking at all the aspects of vehicle quality. Interestingly, of the top 20 problems reported by the Chinese automotive consumer, an unpleasant odor was ranked the highest with a noticeable lead against the other issues equating to about 16% of the concerns reported. While all of the previous stipulated testing into the emission of chemicals from materials has been down to the requirements of the specific automotive manufacturers, passed down to the material manufacturers and the test laboratories, meaning that they have to carry out numerous variations on similar methodology, the introduction of the new China regulation in 2012, which is mandatory, has changed all of this. All of the automotive manufacturers now need to measure the air quality inside their vehicle and report the eight volatile compounds that have been suggested. In the most recent information I have, one of the things that has been removed, though, is that of the TVOC concentration, the total volatile organic compound concentration. And it appears that the ranking criteria of an A to E scale has also been removed from the final draft. This mandatory regulation and the associated methodology means that all of the automotive manufacturers and various material manufacturers now have to carry out the Chinese methodology, whereas they've previously typically been carrying out national or ISO methodology, all of which vary very slightly in some of the parameters. So to harmonize these, the United Nations Economic Commission came together and proposed a new harmonized method, which is also being worked on. Whilst all of these regulations may seem somewhat confusing, the good news is that a lot of the sampling and analysis techniques are harmonized across the board. They're split into two categories. The first is the vehicle interior air quality testing, which is where you take the cabin air and pump a sample directly onto an adsorbent tube and analyze using thermal desorption GCMS. And regardless of whether you're using the ISO methodology, the HJ Chinese methodology, or the new UN methodology, all of the consumables, accessories, and analytical instrumentation is the same. If there's any concern with the level of concentration of the compounds within that sample, then we need to look at the materials. And that can be broken down into either the material component testing or certification testing of larger pieces of material, typically sampled using small chambers or large Tedlar bags, or we can go down to a much smaller scale of screening of materials using the microscale chamber or direct desorption. No matter which one of these sampling methods you're intending to carry out, whether it's pump sampling, small chambers, Tedlar bags, microscale chambers, the good news is that for the analysis of VOCs and SVOCs, you would always draw your sample onto a sorbent tube. And this sorbent tube is analyzed using the same analytical instrumentation every time, thermal desorption GCMS. Unless you're looking at formaldehyde, which is typically sampled onto DMPH cartridges and then analyzed using HPLC. Thermal desorption allows you to look at a wide range of compounds, from the very volatile C2, C3s, all the way through to the heavier semi-volatiles up to C44 and the thermally labile species, such as odorous sulfur compounds, all of which can be validated by techniques such as recollection, leak testing, and internal standard addition. 
Concentration ranges can be analyzed from sub-PPT all the way through to percent level, again allowing you to look at these trace odorous compounds as well as the regulated species. If you're interested in any of the topics that we've briefly touched on in today's presentation, then please go to the website and find the information on the following topics. Or if you'd like to contact us, then please see all the details on the following slide. Thank you very much for your time and we look forward to hearing from you.